Hello to everyone in Growth Day. Such an honor to be here. So today I'm going to focus on momentum in leadership. Here's the deal. Uh, uh, as leaders, all of us, right? All of us uh, are responsible for, for creating momentum. And when I say leaders, it could be leader of your company, your organization. It could be leader of your home, right? It could be leadership of yourself and your personal goals and calling, right? But as leaders, we are responsible for, for creating momentum. And uh, this includes in times of setback, right? Your teams, people around you, people that maybe are your community online or customers you coach or your teams and your company, uh, they need to feel momentum in order to not feel hopeless most of the time, right? And a lot of people can skip over this as a leader and cannot um, fully see the impact of it. And it's super important in growing it cosmetics. You know, we started, as some of you know, um, if you're familiar with, with a little part of my story, we started it in my living room. And for many years, I couldn't afford to hire anybody. And then we started building and building and building. And we, we got to over a thousand employees before I sold the company. Um, but in that journey, I had a lot of people join my company for less money <laughs> than they were making in their current jobs uh, because they weren't feeling not just a vision, right? It's important to have the why, it's important to have a vision, but a lot of people can talk about a great vision. You also have to be able to generate momentum around that vision that people can feel. And when I look back, you know, on these key leadership uh, uh, lessons around momentum that I'm gonna share today, uh, a big part of why people were coming to join my vision for It Cosmetics, it wasn't just the vision. It was that they weren't feeling momentum around it where they were at currently, right? And here's the thing that's beautiful is momentum is free. <laughs> and if you really figure out how to generate it and, and become the master of, of your own momentum and the momentum on your team as a leader, it can be huge in uh, your own growth and your own progress in achieving the vision for success that you have for yourself and also um, for your company or for your community online. And so momentum is so important. Um, when it comes to your teams, we all feel momentum, right? We all kind of know what that is or what that feels like. A really great kind of simple example is, you know, when you're watching a basketball game or a football game on television, if one team is dominating the whole game, well, in that case, you might be able to say, well, maybe they have more talent on their team. Maybe they're stronger players. Maybe they have a stronger coaching staff, right? Right. But if you have two teams neck and neck the entire game, right? Uh, literally the scores neck and neck the entire game. And then you're in the final two minutes, three minutes of the fourth quarter in football. And all of a sudden one team, boom, touchdown, boom. They're in field goal range, boom. You're like, what's going on, right? The whole game was neck and neck. And now all of a sudden the momentum shifts in that last three minutes, the last two minutes, and one team starts dominating. And you're like, I don't understand. How is this quarterback throwing pass after pass after pass? How, 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 and the wide receivers catching it. How is this, this momentum, right? And you feel it. And that's when all the fans go crazy. That's when the people on the opposite team start crying. That's <laughs> in, in the stands, right? So we know that feeling of momentum. Momentum can be contagious right? Just like energy is contagious, momentum can uh, propel us forward. But also we've all often in our lives, um, I should say most all of us have most likely felt momentum in the wrong direction, right? When things just start going not our way and we start propelling in the direction that we don't want to go and everything just seems to start spiraling, right? So I'm going to talk today about momentum during setbacks. It's really easy when we get another rejection or another no, or we put something that we create or ideate out into the world and doesn't go our way, or we launch a big coaching program and we hope, you know, we get a whole bunch of new clients and then we don't, right? And we're trying to motivate ourselves and our team through those setbacks. And this, I believe, is one of the most fundamental laws of leadership is knowing how to reframe setbacks with yourself and with your team in order to create positive momentum 
right? You're like, well, how can a setback be a positive momentum, right? Are you just going to kind of like deny that it happened or put some kind of positive spin on it? No. What I would say is no. Um, I would say it's important to acknowledge the truth, acknowledge, okay, you know, to my teams, for example, the first several years, you guys, <laughs> we got so many rejections along the way, right? I believed in our products. I was super clear. I had very big clarity around the vision I wanted for the company. I was, you know, adamant about making sure everyone on my team knew that vision with crystal clear uh, clarity the whole time. But then what would happen would be everyone is fired up. Everyone's pumped up. We have a big retailer presentation, right? And we go there and it's a no which right away can feel like a failure. Um, and this happened over and over and over. And I was able to get seasoned sales team to join my vision and join the company. I was able to hire people that came from much larger companies that were in all these beauty retailers. They come and, and risk their livelihoods and their future on joining my vision. And we go into a store that they were already in in their past jobs and they're saying no to us right? They're saying you're not the right fit, or we don't think we'll make money from you. And that can be really painful when you're in a situation where you're the leader, where people are looking to you for inspiration. And those moments are so critical that you reframe what happened in an authentic and true way. And you literally generate the kind of momentum that you know you need to have to get to your ultimate vision, right? Super critical, you guys. So few people do this as leaders. So few people do this as leaders. So let me give you a, a real example, right? We go into a Sephora and even though our brand is doing really well and we're having sales success everywhere, they said no to us for six years. So we had even by the time we created, you know, success on QVC and other areas, we were still getting rejections after rejection after rejection. So I want to share how I handled that, how I shifted the momentum as a leader, because this is the difference, I believe, one of the biggest differences in your team staying with you and people wanting to be around you and people maybe working for less money than they could go and get somewhere else because you just can't afford to pay them more yet, right? For me, it wasn't that I wanted to pay them less. I couldn't afford to pay them more until we grew and grew and grew, right? So in the case of getting another big rejection, you know, I would acknowledge it and say, okay, so we got to no. know um, uh, we will get a yes in the future. I believe that. And here's what I want us to focus on as a team. Here's what I want us to focus on as a team. And this is what I would say to my, my leadership team and, and all of our employees. While they said no again, or while this was a rejection, it could come in many forms again, right? We're, our vision is so important. Our vision is so needed. We are aiming to do big things. We are aiming to do something in the beauty industry that has never been done before, right? And so I'd explain that and remind everyone of the vision. And I would say, here's the thing, you guys. I authentically feel bad for that retailer that just said no to us. And I feel really bad for all their customers that are getting robbed of being able to see our products on the shelf and learn about them and discover them. And, and I feel bad for them. And I, I would, I would talk about, I would reframe what had happened, right. Instead of saying, I feel bad for us that we just got rejected. Right. Uh, which would start a spiral of negative momentum. I would talk about our vision. I would acknowledge that the rejection happened, that the setback happened, but I would remind everyone of our vision of why it is so important, why we're doing what we're doing about how often when you're doing something that's novel or hasn't ever been done before, of course, a lot of experts aren't going to get it because they're only used to seeing things that have been done before, right? So maybe they, they can't imagine it succeeding because they've never seen something like what we're doing succeed because it's never been done before. And I would really reframe it. And then I would talk about this just passion for what we were building and creating to the point where I didn't feel bad for us, we got rejected. I felt bad for all those customers that were gonna miss out on even discovering how great our products were because that retailer said no. And I'd feel bad for the retailer because they're gonna miss out on giving their customers something really amazing, right? So I would really focus on that and reframe the rejection 
And what that helps do is, A, it's true. It's not about denying what happened, right? It's like, yes, we got a no. Uh, uh, and, and it's a reminder of our vision and how special it is. It's also uh, really sad for them, right? And it, it was to the point where we built this resiliency around rejection, but we also built momentum. And all of a sudden, a no that happened or a rejection that happened didn't feel like negative momentum. It was almost this reminder of the positive momentum we were building uh, and, and, uh, and kind of use that as fuel. Hello everyone, it is always an honor. I am fired up uh, to talk about friendship. And I think uh, so many of you might have the same experience as I do, whereas as you get older and as life gets busier and as more things sort of like come into our world, uh, it's easy to have friendships maybe change or move to the back burner or to feel like, oh, do I have anything in common with my friends anymore? Should I keep my friends from the past? How do I create new friends? I'm so busy. <laughs> All the things, right? I want to kick off this growth day session on friendship with a quote uh, by Cinderella. Uh, the greatest risk any of us will take is to be seen as we truly are. And I wanna kick off this, this growth day session uh, just by you asking yourself, in your friendships right now, are you truly fully seen as you truly are? And you know, this is a, a, an interesting time for a lot of us where virtual friendships and online and Zoom and all these elements are coming into our life. Um, and they probably won't go away, even post-pandemic. Um, and this idea of how do we show up, right, as we truly and fully are, whether it's in this new digital world or it's, frankly, just seeing a friend for coffee, um, how do we do that and does that even matter? Um, and so really to kick this off, I'm going to dive in first into this idea of your circle of friends. I get this question so often. I get so many, right? I see a lot of you nodding right now. I see Michelle nodding. I see a lot of you. I get this question all the time, which is like, how do I make new friends? And, you know, for a lot of you, I know in the growth day community, um, you know, all of us want to live our best lives and, and grow and, and become the highest, truest expression of ourselves. And yet we also have friends in our lives, a lot of us that maybe that's not a goal of theirs, <laughs> um, but we love them. And so a community like Growth Day is great because it allows us to, to kind of bond and to unify over that, that commonality. But a lot of you have also reached out and asked about, you know, your own circle of friends and, and, and you know, how should you treat the people that maybe you grew up with um, or maybe you've been friends with for 30 years or 40 years or 50 years? Um, and, and what do you do when you start to grow apart? And so I want to share, um, my own experience because, uh, what I learned is, um, you know, I'm so blessed to have friends that are, have been in my, my life a long time, um, long before it cosmetics or any other, uh, type of public thing I've done. Um, and uh, some of them have grown with me and, you know, our lives have nothing in common, but our hearts do. Um, and they continue to be the closest people to me in my life. Um, and then others uh, I love a lot, but whenever we're together, um, I realize, oh, they haven't learned um, how to listen or how to care or how to think beyond themselves and right. And that's okay. But you just kind of realize that when you're around them, maybe, and you share an idea or a hope or a dream or a way you want to give back or, or your own feelings, you kind of feel your vibration lower. Right. And so one of the things that, that I started doing several years ago is really just not only evaluating the way I want to show up as a friend and the way I want to pour into other people, um, but also um, is the circle around me who I trust, who, who I share my hopes and dreams with, who I share my ideas with, um, are they aligned on a heart level, on a soul level? Um, and the first thing I want to talk about, because I think this is what a lot of people get wrong as they look to build their circle, a lot of us have 
years of experience in elementary school and in high school where groups go together who have things in common or, you know, someone's in the athletic group or someone's in the goth group or someone's in this, right? And we start to think of things that way and say, what do I have in common? Where do I belong? Where do I fit in? And one thing that's been life-changing in my life that I want to kick off uh, this idea of your circle with today is I have made this intentional focus in my life to strip all of those, those, those labels um, off of, of not just myself, um, but everyone that I meet and say, does this person have the kind of heart um, that I have? And, 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 and th- does this person want to align with me in terms of um, our values and, um, and all of the things that matter, right? And strip off all the labels. And this has been life-changing for me because when you look at my closest group of friends, literally, they almost have nothing in common on paper, literally nothing in common. They don't have the same faith, so they don't pray the same. They don't have the same socioeconomic background, the same upbringing. I mean, it's just like, but literally, when I think about how is it, and this is, by the way, just been really the last 10 to 15 years of my life that I've figured this out, right? Because for a lot of my life, I felt alone or like I didn't belong often. And I had friends, but even when I was with friends, I kind of would just show up trying to make sure everyone liked me or I was giving everything I could or, you know, that that idea of showing up as your representative, right? Versus your true, full, authentic self. Um, as Cinderella would say, the greatest risk we can take is showing up as we truly are. And I made this intentional decision uh, about 10 to 15 years ago that if I'm going to have a friendship, I want to fully have a real friendship. I want to fully show up as I, as I, as I fully am the good parts, the bad parts, the quirky parts, the messy parts, like all of it. Uh, because what I know to be true and now every research, research study shows this is that it's impossible to have a a true authentic connection with another human being unless you actually show up fully and authentically, right? When you read a lot of Brene Brown's work, if you're familiar with a lot of her work, you know, she talks about how so many of us, whether it's in friendships or any other type of relationship, we are so conditioned to be people pleasers, are so conditioned to show up as our representative, right? As the person we think we need to be for other people to like us. And she says, what happens when you do that is you literally spend your entire life uh, 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 standing outside of who you truly are, hustling for your worthiness over and over and over and over without ever having true, true, true connections. And I made this intentional decision that I want to talk about and encourage everyone to do today because I continue to challenge myself to do this uh, all the time with friends and with relationships that are really important to me is to actually truly fully show up as you fully truly are um, and, and, and hold space for your friends to do the same without judgment. Uh, and that's been something that has been literally life-changing for me. In the past 10 to 15 years, the group of friends uh, that are my closest friends, the ones that I call, you know, when I have the highest highs and also the lowest lows, right? I think Oprah is famous for saying, uh, you don't just want the friends that ride in the limo with you. You want the friends that like ride and catch the bus with you when the limo breaks down, right? Because that's how you know who your true friends are. And For me, I've assembled and been so blessed to just bring in a a great group of friends that are so very different from me, Um, look nothing like me, (laughs) Um, literally, but uh, but they have the same hearts. And so the first thing I just want to encourage everyone to just think about, because I think I think we get past high school and then we're in our 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s. and, And we forget that we do this. But deeply rooted in us, we often still have labels that are on ourselves and on other people. And when we remove those and say, huh, you know, uh, I want to manifest another incredible friend in my life. Um, Here's what I'm looking for in them. And it's, it's soul level stuff, right? You never know where they're going to come from. Um, or what they look like, or what their story is. Um, And in doing this so intentionally, um, 
I've built the strongest friendships in my life. I'm so excited to be here and uh, especially with this topic this month, advanced mindset and resilience. When I think about, you know, my days of going from working as a waitress at Denny's and my whole journey of having ideas or hopes or dreams uh, to launching one of those dreams in my living room, to getting tons of no's and going through so much setback. When I think about like, what are those defining things that help me uh, level up in mindset and also stay resilient and keep going after what I knew was part of my calling? And really it comes down to, one of the big things that it comes down to is me being able to change my relationship in my own mindset with rejection. Rejection is victory. I want you to write that down and I want you to think about this idea. Okay, here we go. How many people, right, stay in their comfort zone because they're afraid of rejection, they're afraid of failure, they're afraid of people seeing them start small. How many people stay in their comfort zone forever? (laughs) How many people talk themselves out of their own truth forever and never actually become the person they're born to be, right? If you are someone, and I'm going to say one of the courageous people, one of the brave people who is stepping into your calling, who is stepping into your, your purpose or multiple purposes in this life, if you're one of the brave people doing that, you're going to get rejection after rejection after rejection. It just comes, right? Think about every person in in history that's done anything great. Think about everyone living right now. That's a great example of of, uh, accomplishment or impact or inspiration, right? And you just look at their lives, even, even the greatest, constant rejections on their journey. So what I learned to do early on that I really want to challenge you to do today is to literally see rejection as victory. And what I mean by that is, if you are one of the courageous people who is brave enough to literally be on the path to your calling and to be stepping into the person you're born to be in this lifetime, every time you get a rejection, it's a reminder that you're one of those brave people who's literally doing it. Like you're one of those brave people stepping into your calling. And you guys, I had to flip the switch in my head because when I started It Cosmetics, and I can give a million other examples in my personal life, in my years before launching the company, in my journey of launching Believe It, my book, there's there's so many examples of this. But the big one that stands out to me is, is when I launched this dream in my living room and I was not ready for it to be like, for it to get no traction. I didn't realize, I thought if my product's really good and I have a great vision, a great why behind it, I I believe in it. I just thought, of course, it's going to sell. It's going to turn into a successful company. I was not ready or prepared in any way for the hundreds and hundreds of no's that I would get the first several years. For, For experts that I used to put on a pedestal to say they didn't believe in it, I wasn't ready for that. And when I started getting no after no, obviously we've, we've all had forms of rejection in our life. It hurts. It's painful. It, it's easy to think, well, maybe my gut is wrong. Maybe I don't have what it takes. All those things, right? And I eventually had this big aha moment where I knew because even though I was getting hundreds of no's, even though this went on for years, you guys, before we ever had any, any signs of success for our company, I, every time I would check in with my gut, it kept saying, you're supposed to be doing this, right? You're supposed to be doing this. I felt it. And so because of that, what I decided to do, and I had this big aha moment around it, was I flipped my mindset around rejection. And I just made the decision that, you know what? Because I know I'm supposed to be putting this idea out into the world, this passion out into the world, this mission out into the world that I believed in so much when I was creating my company, uh, I believed in that. So because of that, I just decided I'm a person who's actually doing that, even when it's hard, even when it's not rewarded, even when no one's buying and we got no orders again today, right? All those times I just flipped the switch. Okay. Uh, every time I got another no, 
every time someone said, you're not the right fit, or we don't think you're going to do well in our stores, or every day we got no orders, <laughs> rejection comes in so many forms, right? I literally just decided, okay, this rejection is a victory, right? It's another victory because I'm one of the brave few who's literally going after my calling, who's putting my ideas out into the world, who's showing up to serve with my whole heart the best way I know how. And when I flip this idea that rejection is a victory, it literally helped me fear it less right? And help me become a little more fearless and in, in really showing up uh, for the reasons why I was there to show up for, which was, was to serve other people and to put a product out in the world I really believed in. So if you, and imagine <laughs> if you can flip, right? Because I know we're talking advanced mindset and resilience, and this is so simple, yet how many people do this, right? If you can flip in your head every time you get a no, Every time you get a setback, let's say you go post something today and no one likes it. <laughs> like, like there's the simplest things that make us feel rejected. And sometimes those, we let those turn into self-doubt in our own head. I'm challenging you today to flip the switch. Rejection is a victory. Oh, someone just said no to you again. Oh, a client just left. Oh, whatever happened, right? Right? Just literally flip it in your head as a reminder that you are one of the brave few who is courageous enough to be going after your calling in life. So rejection is a victory because all it is is a reminder that you're one of those people. It's a victory that you are one of those people, right? That you're going to be on this path to becoming the person you're born to be. And if that's you, rejection is just going to come with the territory. Anybody who puts out ideas uh, or works or, 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 or their heart, right? Anyone who does that, who's brave enough to do that, it comes with rejection. So rejection is victory. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember and you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.